Hi, I'm Ray Buckley, one of the physician assistants with the Department of Plastic Surgery at Johns Hopkins. And I'm Samantha Stifler. I'm also a physician assistant with the department. As PAs, we're typically the providers managing your post-operative care. And today we'd like to guide you through some of the post-operative considerations when you have tissue expanders placed at the time of mastectomy. After surgery, when you look at your surgical sites, you'll notice a piece of clean, dry, white gauze covered in plastic dressing. We ask you to keep this in place for two to three days after surgery, but it can stay on until your first post-operative visit with us at seven to 10 days after surgery. These dressings are waterproof, so feel free to shower after two or three days and feel empowered to take them off if at any point water or moisture accumulates underneath. Some surgeons choose to place what's called an incisional vac over your surgical incisions. It will look like a purple or kind of dark colored sponge, again with that plastic dressing over the top, and there's nothing for you to do with this. It should stay on until your first post-operative visit when one of us will take it off for you. We're gonna talk a little bit about post-operative medications. We have a standard protocol that we follow with you, and as long as you have drains in place, you should be taking an oral antibiotic. Pain medications are also something we talk about frequently with patients. Primary treatment is gonna be with your over-the-counter medications, and then we do utilize stronger prescription medications if needed. Please remember to tell your provider if you have any allergies to medications and do not drive or operate machinery while taking narcotic medications. We'll talk with you a lot about post-operative activity restrictions with hopes of optimizing your healing progress after surgery. We ask you not to lift, push, pull more than five or 10 pounds after surgery and not to engage in any strenuous physical activity. Like I said before, you're free to shower two or three days after surgery but you are not allowed to soak in a bathtub, a pool, or a body of water until cleared by your surgeon. If you want to pursue physical therapy, we'll allow you to do this once drains have been removed. Common question we get is post-operative clothing. We encourage you to wear something comfortable on the day of surgery that's loose fitting and that you don't mind may get soiled. Most commonly, you will not be asked to wear a bra and or any compression garment after surgery. If we want you to wear a bra, we will outfit you with that while you're in the hospital, so you don't need to purchase any garments. One of the things that patients worry most about after surgery is how they're going to maintain their surgical drains. Don't worry, it's very easy. Sam and I are gonna walk you through it. You will be outfitted with sometimes as many as six drains after surgery. Commonly, you'll just have one or two serving each surgical site. The drain looks like a long, flexible tube with a squishy bulb at the end, and it will collect any output that's prone to collecting under the skin that could compromise healing progress. The drains work by engaging that suction bulb and they'll actively pull away the fluid that your body produces after any injury or trauma. The purpose of the drain is to collect any fluid that wants to accumulate in the surgery site. It helps promote healing as to not stress your incisions from the inside out and to not promote infection. You can expect in your drain bulb that fluid will collect anywhere on the spectrum of kind of bright or dark red blood to a clear, what we call serous fluid. I think of it as the fluid that collects in a blister. Sometimes you'll even notice little strands of tissue in the drain, and that's okay. We expect that. It's important to know that your drain is stitched to the skin with a single stitch. The drain should be on suction at all times, meaning the bulb should be squished down. You should anticipate having the drains anywhere from one to six weeks after surgery. Drains are removed in clinic, and we never take out more than one drain at a single surgical site at a time. Sam's gonna walk us through how to perform drain care. So we've outlined the seven easy steps in order to get you through caring for your drains at home in the post-operative period. Now you may be doing this and or a caregiver if applicable. The first thing you're gonna do is wash your hands, either with regular soap and water or with a sanitary gel. This is the Jackson Pratt drain here that we have. You can see the bulb at the end and the long strip that will be coming from the surgical site. The first thing you're going to do is strip the tubing. The easiest way to do this, as Ray is demonstrating, is take an alcohol swab Place your non-dominant hand at the site of the surgical incision where the stitch is and hold it tightly so that you're not pulling on the drain too much. You're going to squeeze gently but firmly enough so that you can run that alcohol bed down 
the tubing in order to get any of that fluid and or tissue to make its way down towards the collecting bulb. Once that fluid and the tissue gets in the bulb, you will remove the suction cap. You do nothing with the tubing but just the suction cap and pour it into a measuring cup. Most of the measuring cups that you get are going to be outfitted with measuring lines of cc's, milliliters, and or ounces. You're going to record that amount that is in that cup on a drain log which we will provide you with. You can discard that fluid into the toilet and rinse the drain cup. However, never rinse the drain tubing and or the bulb. It is very important after this process that you squeeze the tubing, replace the cap, and make sure that your drain again is on suction. If your drain is not on suction, please call your provider. After this process, it's apparent that you need to wash your hands again using sanitary gel or soap and water. As Sam mentioned, it's important that you keep track of the output coming from your drain. We ask you to physically bring these logs to your post-operative visit because they help us determine when it's appropriate to take them out. On each log, you'll keep track of each individual drain and you'll keep a running total for a daily 24-hour period output volume. You can see here, while we ask you to do your drain care more than one time per day, we want you to keep a 24-hour total. Again, as Ray mentioned, you should strip and empty those drains at least every 8 to 12 hours, more frequently if needed, and the bulb is collecting fluid and filling up. Please remember to not rinse the drain with any water as this may cause infection, and call your provider for any drain issues. The tissue expansion process is pretty simple, but we know it can be intimidating for patients. We hope this video puts your mind at ease and helps you understand what will happen at your weekly visits with us. Remember, the tissue expander that you have placed will be placed above the muscle, below the breast skin, making it very tolerable postoperatively for you to undergo the expansion process because we're only stretching out that thin layer of numb skin. We're going to talk about the tissue expander basics. So the first question here is, what do they feel like? It is a temporary implant. It's plastic and it has a metal port. Many women say that they feel like they may be wearing a tight bra. Sometimes it can feel like a foreign object sitting on the chest. Again, please remember that these are temporary and we do understand that they're not always the most comfortable implant. As far as what they look like and how you get expanded, we do have a demonstration to show you exactly what the tissue expander um, process is going to be. This is a tissue expander. Think of it as an empty, adjustable, temporary breast implant. It has a metal port with a magnetic back underneath and we can utilize that to figure out where we need to instill the sterile saline. When you come to clinic, although you won't be able to see this expander itself, we will utilize on the outside a compass of sorts, a magnet, to tell us where we'll inject the saline. We'll create a mark on the outside of the skin. After we locate the magnetic port and mark the skin with a skin marker, we will access the port with a needle. This is done as sterilely as possible and your physician assistant or a nurse will walk you through this process. Again, remember this is needle access through the port, but the majority of patients don't find this to be too uncomfortable because they are numb. The sensations we generally have patients tell us they feel are going to be sensations of fullness or cool feeling because of the injectable saline. Saline is simply salt water. It is the same thing you receive through a general IV. This is the system we can demonstrate here. It is a one-way valve system with a syringe. This is the sodium chloride saline solution which will be hanging. And this is the needle which will access the tissue expander port located right here. Once you are expanded at an interval, your provider will bandage the site and then you will be asked to come back typically on a weekly basis to have expansions. We don't typically start tissue expansion until about two or four weeks after your initial surgery, after the mastectomy and the placement of the tissue expander itself. We'll complete these tissue expansions as Sam talked us through before as frequently as weekly. At that time, we need you to help guide us through the process and tell us when you feel balanced again. Some patients want to be bigger than they were before. Some patients want to be smaller than they were before. Some patients want to be the exact same size. You're the boss. 
you guide us through this process and you tell us once you feel that tissue expansions are complete and you've achieved the volume that you like. We then wait about four to six weeks of just letting the breast skin rest before we consider exchanging for your final reconstruction, whether it be with an implant or your own tissue. As I mentioned before, each tissue expansion can be performed on a weekly basis. We ask you to guide us through the process and it typically takes about four to six weeks. In some of the preoperative documentation you'll give you, we've outlined a rough timeline. Know that the soonest we would consider going from your initial surgery to the next surgery is about three months. Further considerations regarding tissue expanders include additional adjuvant therapies from your oncology team. These include chemo, radiation, and immune therapies. These treatments can be done in sequence with your tissue expansions. The timeline of things depends on your health, the integrity of the skin, and what your oncology team recommends. During radiation, you will not have tissue expansion. You hopefully will be expanded prior to radiation simulation, and the breast that it is being radiated will be fully expanded. If you have a bilateral mastectomy, we may need to deflate the breast that does not have cancer or is not getting radiation. The breast will be deflated during the period of radiation, but can be rapidly expanded in clinic after completion of radiation therapy. Once radiation is complete, you wait about four to six months for that tissue expander to be removed in the next surgery and have your final reconstruction. Again, with chemotherapy, we ask that you keep us updated on your blood work and your labs so that we are doing fills as sterilely as possible when healthy for you. When we place the expanders in the prepectoral position, as we've said over and over again, one of the things we worry about most is seroma or fluid collection around the expander underneath the breast skin. We worry about this because it's a protein rich dessert for bacteria to want to feed on and bacteria love to find foreign bodies under the skin like the expander. If you have a seroma, please let us know. If you're unsure if you have a seroma, please let us know and we can make arrangements to have an ultrasound performed and potentially this fluid aspirated. As I mentioned, the seromas are worrisome to us because of the risk of infection. If you develop an infection in the breast, typically you would see signs like redness, warmth to touch, you might even have a fever or just generally feel unwell. We want to know about this as soon as possible. If we know about it sooner rather than later and can catch it, we can start you with some oral antibiotics. If we need to, we can progress to IV antibiotics in the hospital. And if at any point the infection overcomes the expander itself, we make arrangements to have it taken out through a surgery. Let the breast envelope rest. And then in the future, your surgeon will go back and replace the implant. We thank you for taking time out of your busy day to educate yourself on this process. And we look forward to really walking you through this journey. It's an honor to be part of your care.